always knew we wanted a clawfoot tub upstairs and we found this circa 1920 Kohler tub at the architectural salvage place in Seattle. The main thing I was looking for was something less than $500 that was five feet long and did not have any major damage on the interior of the tub. I planned to refinish the tub so it didn't matter what the outside looked like. I also picked up some cedar shingles and the linoleum flooring that trip. Once back at the farm, Stacy had to take off some of the old plumbing fixtures and then it was time to load the tub into the house. And of course we used a tractor for that. We left out a stud and that allowed us to use the tractor to lift it up into the second floor. And that's where it stayed after we got it in there since August of 2017. We put in the stud and closed up the house and focused on everything else. And now it's time to get going on getting this tub ready to work. Here are the finished claw feet. I used the orange chemical stripper and was able to remove a lot of the gunk. I then did some light sanding carefully and reprimed them and painted them. It is amazing how much more detail you can see now that I got rid of that other layers of paint. And we did a hammered silver finish. Looking forward to seeing them put together on the tub. It is now time to strip the old paint off the outside of our clawfoot tub. So for that we are going to use a chemical stripper, a citrus strip. And I have everything prepped. I got plastic on the floor. The tub's held up uh, off the floor with blocks. I've masked the porcelain and closed off the openings. The paint stripper has been applied, so now we just wait. Got to give it time to let it do its job. We did test the paint that is on the tub for lead and it did come back positive. So that is one of the reasons we decided to use a chemical stripper rather than just sanding it. We didn't want to put all that lead paint dust up into the air. Now we have been doing some light sanding using caution to make sure we're not getting anything airborne. And then after that, we're gonna do a primer, a finish coat, and it will be time to put it into our new bathroom. Mainly cleaning up some of this um, surface so that it's a little bit smoother, feathering out a little bit. I got different types of sandpaper. I don't know about you, but I'm a 60 grit girl. I can only find 80 in the shop to get started on some stuff. And then I'm going up, you know, a little bit finer. After I do that, I'm gonna wipe everything down with denatured alcohol, and it'll be time to do the primer. Let's get started. This is the side of the tub that you will see when you walk into the bathroom. So we don't need a perfect finish, but we do want to feather out some of these divots just so it lays flatter. Here you can tell that I feathered it out. It didn't take that long and it didn't create a lot of dust. That's what I'm going for. Hi Carly. Come to help me. I opened the primer we had and it definitely was not good. So I got some new primer and let's see what it looks like and get started. Ooh, that's much better. Much better. For this painting, I'm also wearing my organic vapor respirator. Let's get going. Everything is still going well. I started painting on the back side just so I can get a feel for this type of paint. The coat of primer is done. It looks a little shiny here because it's still drying. Let it dry for a day and then we can do our pop coat. It's now been 24 hours and the primer has dried to a nice matte gray. Looks like we got good coverage so I'm going to go ahead and start working on the awesome top coat. 
You know how much we like to do a lot of planning here on the Tomarosa. We bought this paint on August 24th, 2017. So yeah, I'm glad that I decided that it was so important I needed to buy it back in August of 2017. Hmm. So let's check out this paint. Ooh. All right, we are ready to go. Let's see what this color looks like. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is bright. I like it. So the paint is going on very well. Uh, the primer did its job. It sealed up everything. It's giving me a good painting surface. And this paint is a oil-based semi-gloss enamel so it will have more of a sheen to it after the first top coat. I am very happy with the way the paint has gone on and how it looks. I'm working at mocking up the drain pipes for the clawfoot tub and the kit we have gives us lots of extra pipes so that's good. Um, I'm gonna have to cut it. Uh, the way it works is this fitting here will actually connect the pipes. So I have one piece cut and I just want to confirm everything matches up before I cut the other piece because you can always take a little extra off but you can't put it back. So I got it all mocked up loosely on the tub. Uh, what I do to make sure that the back piece is uh, square is I used a framing square. When I cut all the pipe I cut it to try and leave myself the maximum amount of adjustment. We got on our floor last night looking good and now Stacy is preparing the plumbing underneath the tub because it's a lot easier to do it upside down than when it's already in place ain't that the truth the bathroom is finally all ready and it is time to move in the tub Woo! well that was some heavy lifting we have managed to get the tub actually in the bathroom again, but this time now it has been painted. And Stacy is working on finishing the drain install. And then we just need to clean the inside of the tub. And then it will finally be bath time! So excited. These feet just go lightly into place. So to make sure they stay while we are maneuvering the tub, Stacy's just putting them in and then wrapping tape around them. And we did get our tub in. Now Stacy is going to work on putting in the faucet and the water supply. For our tub, we opted to have just a, I don't know what they call it, a classic or antique, smaller faucet as opposed to like a huge thing that has like a gooseneck and a shower feature. This faucet here is actually very similar to the original faucet that we took off the tub when we bought it. Yeah, except for this one actually has nicer handles. And it works. There's that too. We assume. We hope. Here comes the foreman. Hi Carly. For plumbing in our clawfoot tub, uh, we decided to go with flexible lines. Uh, makes it a little easier on me. A lot of times you'll see on clawfoot tubs where they're hard piped all the way in. And uh, that is certainly an option, but you know, we roughed this in, I think before we had a tub, so we weren't exactly sure where everything was going to be anyway. 
Uh, but overall, I think that looks good. It's kind of hidden up in the corner anyway, so it's mostly out of view. The only thing we need to do is we need to get a escutcheon plate for the drain where it goes through the floor. Um, but other than that, everything is hooked up and we're almost ready to try it out. Here is our first test. Stacy is turning on the water to the faucet. And it's running. See any leaks? Not yet. Kind of grody looking water, huh? All right, now that we have the faucet handle tightened. Wow, come out. Woo! Stacy's now working on installing our toilet in the upstairs bathroom in our tub. It is mostly really clean on the inside, no chips or dings, but there were a couple of like rust spots and other things, so I have an assortment of things I'm trying, things I found on the internet, of course. Uh, I'm trying right now a mixture of baking soda and peroxide, and so that's it on a couple of places where there's some rust stains, and we'll see how that works. I was able to get most of the small rust stains and a little bit of dingy areas out. I tried the hydrogen peroxide and the baking soda. I didn't really see any results from that. I did use temp and that seemed to work pretty well with a non-scratch pad and I'm very pleased with how it looks. We are testing our tub, all the fittings and the overflow. Everything's good so far. What is that, Carly? What is that? Our tub is now installed, plumbed, and appears to be functioning correctly. We cleaned it out and it is now ready for a big bubble bath.